Hi everyone. Good evening. How are you guys? Long time. I hope you all are doing well, guys. So it's okay. Five more minutes ahead, but I think let's start. Let's not wait. Okay. Let's not wait. Let's start uh, because the class will take a little longer time. Okay. Okay. So, guys, today's topic is hypertension. As uh, you know, in last topics, in last week, uh, I mean, last three, four classes, we have discussed all about plaque formation and we have discussed about the drugs which helps in, you know, dissolving the plaques or treating the plaques, right? I mean, the clots, correct? So kind of treatments for that. Still, there are a few things, you know, which we will be discussing, like, uh, you know, ACS, acute coronary syndrome, and uh, their signs and symptoms, their, uh, you know, all the treatment, long-term treatments and all, we will be discussing those uh, as well. So the basics have been covered there, right? And pharmacotherapy of uh, antiplatelets is also covered. Thrombolytic agents are also covered, right? Coagulation cascade covered. Platelet aggregation and, uh, you know, is also covered. Activation and aggregation. Then now, Today, we will start with hypertension, okay? And uh, then we'll be discussing the hypertensive drugs. So first, let's understand the hypertension and pathophysiology of hypertension and other related concerns, right? Let me share my... And I believe that everyone will be, uh, you know, putting your mics off during the class. So I hope the one note is visible to everyone. If I'm not wrong, is it? Okay, visible. Right. So my first question to all of you is, what is hypertension and what are the types of hypertension, guys? Tell me. What is the type? I mean, what are the types of hypertension? And what is hypertension? Yes, guys. Today's class is really going to be interesting because a lot of, uh, you know, amazing things are there to discuss. Yes, please tell me. Okay. Raised blood pressure. Okay, abnormal increase in systolic blood flow. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Since I have uh, started the blood pressure or hypertension class, people started leaving. I think they are masters of hypertension. <laughs> they are master of hypertension. People are like, no, we don't want to study hypertension today. We don't want to study the hypertension, right? So they start leaving. Wow. Okay, no problem. So <clears throat> yes, absolutely. So hypertension is nothing but elevated blood pressure, elevated blood pressure because of the peripheral resistance, because of the increased peripheral resistance. Okay, so let me tell you what is hypertension, guys. Hypertension is actually two types. One is primary right? One is primary and second is secondary, right? Why we call it primary? Why we call it primary? Because this is not associated, okay? Not associated with any other region, okay? With any other region. This is not associated with any other region, right? This is only either genetic 
or maybe you know due to other uh, not even environmental factor we can say this is totally genetic or idiopathic okay idiopathic right idiopathic hypertension so primary hypertension is either due to the genetics or due to the idiopathic reasons that means the reasons of this type of hypertension is not clear or are not clear right the reasons for hypertension are not clear here correct so what we do is we usually you know check for what if we are not finding the cause then what should we do guys or how do we diagnose the primary uh, you know hypertension yes please tell me yes family history obesity yes family history or obesity there are multiple things which we can you know uh, check to uh, you know check the uh, primary reasons right and what is secondary hypertension guys what is secondary hypertension it's just starting okay uh, working mm -hmm. one sec guys why is this okay perfect got it so with known reasons of elevated bp okay okay now i think i'm perfect so primary or idiopathic hypertension means there are no reasons or there are no obvious reasons or there are no obvious uh you know etiologies okay etiologies which are associated with the raised blood pressure so that is called as primary hypertension now secondary hypertension is secondary hypertension could be uh, you know related to multiple things secondary hypertension that means we are we are having certain regions we are having certain causes of the hypertension and we have certain etiologies for the hypertension so hypertension has not happened directly here okay hypertension has not uh, you know there is no direct onset of the hypertension but there are some uh, you know things which are linked with hypertension in uh, you know in the human beings so that is not genetics or that is not the family history that is because of the certain other regions so certain other regions can someone tell me what are certain other regions guys first is comorbidities okay comorbidities so comorbidities could be what could be the comorbidities for hypertension guys ckd diabetes or and what else what else guys tell me acs what else what else could be okay yes people are writing cushing syndrome pcod yes pregnancy right right then what else hyperlipidemia yes stress so yes absolutely hyperlipidemia stress or then after comorbidities and all then there may stress is not comorbidity but stress is one of the factor environmental factor we can say okay so environmental factors environmental factors could be you know stress or it could be uh you know toxins exposure to you know some radiations right 
and and what social habits social habits also are related to what is that smoking alcohol tobacco chewing right so these could be the possible reasons for secondary hypertension right these could be the secondary uh, you know hypertension reasons and causes for the secondary hypertension now there is very important thing guys there is very important thing one is called as drug induced hypertension okay drug induced hypertension so can someone tell me what could be the drugs which are associated with the hypertension please tell me guys what are the drugs which are related to hypertension can someone tell me yes absolutely absolutely anesthetics corticosteroids yeah yes definitely increased consumption of salt yes that is uh, again the uh, you know major factor food or lifestyle we can say food and lifestyle right that is also you know leading to the secondary hypertension correct so drugs what are these anesthetics it could be you know what else you have written here phenytoin is it anticoagulants beta blockers vasoconstrictors cyclosporine okay let me show you okay let me show you so these are the drugs which are associated with what hypertension okay so diseases which are related with hypertension are cushing syndrome chronic kidney disease coarctation of aorta obstructive sleep apnea parathyroid disease okay and uh, you know few, uh, few chromocytoma then primary aldosteronism then renovascular disease thyroid disease these are the diseases which are associated with the hypertension and along with that there are some drugs first corticosteroids then estrogens okay usually used in contraceptives then nsaids okay then cox2 inhibitors sometimes aspirin also you know uh, raise the bar of hypertension raise the bar of blood pressure but not in all the patients okay then phenylpropanolamine then uh, this like other analogs of uh, uh, you know ppa and then cyclosporine tacrolimus erythropoietin therapy also is uh, you know associated with hypertension then certain antidepressants like uh, you know bromocriptin or uh, you know venlafaxin etc these are also associated with the hypertension okay and then beta blockers without alpha blocker first then these can also raise the hype, uh, raise the bar of blood pressure okay and then some other street drugs like cocaine and cocaine withdrawal also can cause the hypertension then other drugs like herbal ecstasy okay nicotine or nicotine withdrawal also can do anabolic steroids can do narcotic withdrawals can also you know lead to the hypertension then there are other uh, drugs which are like uh, you know ergot containing herbal products and st john's wort and uh, there are some foods uh, you know food substances also like as we were discussing salt intake uh, you know in the so high salt intake can lead to that high ethanol consumption alcohol consumption then liquor ice also can lead to that <clears throat> and then tyramine containing foods okay if taking a mono amine oxidase inhibitor okay and then certain chemicals like lead mercury thallium uh, and heavy metals or lithium these also can lead to the hypertension right so these are the drugs associated with the hypertension in humans okay and there are other reasons as well as we have discussed uh, marijuana is not related to hypertension marijuana is related to uh, you know suppression of the you know brain cells suppression of the brain cells and it is kind of hypnotic so that does not raise the uh, you know blood pressure but that decreases the blood pressure okay that leads to the hypotension not the hypertension marijuana is not associated with hypertension that is associated with what hypotension okay that's associated with hypotension right <clears throat> okay then uh, now what are the specific ranges how do we say the uh, you know hypertension is uh, uh, you know classified or you know categorized in different different things so there are two or three major uh, you know uh, organizations or institutions which takes care of the hypertension classification or hypertension management or you know they take care of the you know guidelines preparations for the hypertension right guidelines preparation for the hypertension so first of all there is the thing called jnc okay there is the thing called jnc jnc is nothing but what is that jnc joint national committee okay joint national committee is jnc okay joint national committee and 
there are now this is this is the old one seventh report but we have with us right now jnc second okay i mean sorry jnc eight jnc eight is already uh, you know they are in the market so you can read the jnc8 also i mean there are no uh, uh, specific changes in jnc8 and jnc7 but still you should you know prefer always the new guidelines right so still you know you can go and check out the jnc8 guidelines right and then uh, the famous very famous guidelines 2017 acc ha guidelines which has changed the entire norms of the hypertension diagnosis Okay, so let me tell you the story of what happens in 2017-18 when I was in my PhD uh, final year. Uh, okay, so how this ACC has come up. ACC is American College of Cardiology and AHA is American Heart Association. Usually worldwide, you know, uh, either JNC. I mean, there are four or five organizations which takes care of, uh, you know, hypertension. Otherwise, for cardiology, there are only two, ACC, AHA and ESC, right? But for hypertension, there are multiple. First, what we follow is JNC, Joint National Committee. Okay, and then there is ACC, AHA. Okay, American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association. Then there is ESC, European Society of Cardiology. Then there is one more International Hypertension Society. Okay, International Society for Hypertension, that is IHS. Okay, so this is also there. International Hypertension Society is there. So these all prepare their own guidelines. Okay, and other than that, other than that, not only these, but other than that, there is, uh, you know, uh, Diabetes Foundation and there is, uh, you know, International uh, Diabetic Foundation, IDF. And, uh, you know, you have seen that, uh, uh, you know, other uh, diabetic foundations also, uh, which are associated with, uh, you know, the guidelines making. And those also make the guidelines for hypertension, like National Kidney Foundation. Okay, because they give the recommendations in particular diseases, like if uh, IDF is preparing, if IDF is preparing, International Diabetic Foundation is preparing or, uh, you know, American uh, Diabetic Association, ADA is preparing the guidelines for diabetes, then they also prepare the, uh, you know, they then they also, uh, what we say, uh, that then they also propose the bar of the blood pressure in diabetic patients, right? So specific recommendations to control the hypertension in diabetic patients. Like sim similarly, if the NKF, this National Kidney Foundation is preparing the guidelines for national, I mean the kidney management, uh, either that is, you know, acute kidney failure or that is chronic kidney failure. So if they are preparing the guidelines for, uh, you know, kidney failures or, uh, you know, kidney uh, problem diagnosis or renal insufficiencies, then they keep considerate uh, the hypertension because hypertension is the major problem for diabetes and uh, you know kidney problems right so they also prepare the guidelines for uh, you know hypertension in the particular disease so we usually if we are you know considering the hypertension in diabetic patients then we uh, you know we can consider idf or ada guidelines or if we are you know talking about the kidney problems and hypertension then we can follow the nkf guidelines for that right so these are the major guidelines when you are reading the hypertension so you should keep in mind Okay, you should always keep in mind if we are reading the hypertension in diabetic patients, we should follow definitely we should follow the JNC and AC, ACC or AHA. They are the major guidelines. But if we are, you know, following specifically for the kidney problems and in the kidney disease, then we can recommend the NKF guidelines. If we are talking about diabetic patients, then we can recommend the IDF or ADA guidelines. Right, guys. So here, there are two major guidelines. Okay, there are two major guidelines and we have seen the, we are seeing the comparison between JNC and a ACC AHA. Okay, so see, the first thing, uh, the story I forgot to tell you, a story I was telling in 2017, what happened is, till that time, the bar of blood pressure, I mean the, you know, the normal bar of uh, blood pressure, the cutoff of blood pressure, if I say in the normal, in the layman language, the cutoff was 130 by 90. Okay, less than 130 by 90 was the normal blood pressure. Okay, before 2000, uh, 2017, normal blood pressure according to ACC, AHA, according to JNC guidelines, it was less than 130 by 90. That was the normal one, right? Or we can say from 120 to 139, from 120 to 139, it was pre-hypertension, okay? from 130 or uh, 120 to 139 it was pre hypertension but what happened is like till 139 i'm saying okay till 139 it was normal uh, i mean the pre hypertension but what happened suddenly is acc and aha has come up with the newer guidelines and they have you know increased the hypertension bar for 
10 more mm hg okay they have increased the bar for 10 mm hg okay as you can see normal blood pressure now is just less than 120 okay that time it was 130 before 2017 now it is 120 only according to acc aha okay that time it was 130 or we can say 120 to 139 this was the pre-hypertension you can see here you know see look at the acc aha guidelines now normal blood pressure is just less than 120 okay it should be less than 120 by 80 80 is diastolic blood pressure and 120 is systolic blood pressure right but when we are talking about 129 to 130 i mean 129 120 to 129 or we can say this they consider this now as elevated blood pressure okay elevated blood elevated blood pressure means hypertension people don't understand that but this is the hypertension which can be considered to give the therapy okay and due to this decision due to this just 10 mm hg bar you know immediately the 10 million people 10 million people worldwide 10 million people worldwide became hypertensive the, by that time they were not hypertensive but since they have considered since they have included 120 to 129 also into the elevated blood pressure or hypertension immediately these people became hypertensive and they had to start the medicine so no comments, but there are, uh, you know, pharmaceutical lobbies included in this decision. But, uh, you know, other uh, guidelines says that that's not correct. And they are, again, you know, uh, recently they have published some papers. They are reconsidering the blood pressure, uh, you know, consensus worldwide. They are reconsidering the blood pressure consensus worldwide to reduce the, uh, you know, MMHGs in that. Reduce the cutoff. Reducing means, I'm not saying the reducing means 120 to 110, 110, but it will be like 120 to 140 maybe, or maybe 130 to 139 will be again the pre-hypertension. Okay, so that means the reducing or increasing means if it is coming down, right? So, according to ACC AHA, right now, the what, less than 120 is the normal one. Okay, and 120 to 129 is also elevated. And now pre-hypertensive is pre-hypertensive is only one, that is 130 to 139. And according to JNC, 120 to 139 is pre-hypertension. Still, according to JNC 8, also, you know, 120 to 139 is pre-hypertension. So no need to take the medication. Why classification is very important why classification is important because if we have to start the medications or not if we go according to acc aha we should start the medications immediately after your blood pressure goes more than 120 but according to jnc if it is less than 140 we should consider the diet and lifestyle modifications okay diet and lifestyle modification remember these things these are very important so these can be you know considered to treat your di uh, treat your hypertension in case when your blood pressure is 120 to 139 according to jnc but according to acc aha you must take the medications if your blood pressure is 130 or more okay and you can consider again you can consider the medicines if your blood pressure is more than 120 because your blood pressure is elevated according to acc and aha right and then stage 1 is 140 to 159 and then more than 160 is your stage 2 hypertension okay stage 2 hypertension according to jnc, JNC also according to acc and aha also so they have uh, you know the huge difference but that is in the pre hypertension and normal Okay, so they have changed the pre-hypertension categories to the elevated BP and, you know, stage one, right? Understand the guidelines and understand the difference between these things. So now if I say that I want to see what should be the considered blood pressure levels in, what should be the preferred or considered blood pressure in, you know, diabetic patients or, you know, elderly patients or in kidney failure patients, because we should have some targets we should have some target when we are uh, you know treating such patients when we are treating the hypertensive patients we should have some targets in our mind right targets to treat our treat the patients in our mind right sir if sbp falls under pre hypertension and uh, dvp falls under stage 1 then how we will determine the stage of blood pressure see that is the systolic blood pressure usually okay that is the systolic blood, mean blood pressure okay that can be considered so if we are you know taking multiple volume multiple uh you know readings one two three then we can just consider the mean blood pressure for three readings okay that i'll tell you how to diagnose okay 
but usually we go with the systolic blood pressure not the diastolic blood pressure right okay so here are the specific guidelines okay here are the specific targets and guidelines so if it is the normal adult okay if it is the normal adult less than you know normal adult less than 60 years like if, suppose 18 to 60 years right so according to jnc guidelines according to jnc guidelines this is not less than sorry this is more than i'm so sorry okay so this is not less than this is the uh, more than eight more than okay this is less than okay so this is more than uh, okay so if the elderly patients if there are elderly patients more than 60 years so according to jnc the target level should be less than 150 by 90 mmhg okay and according to acc aha look at this according to acc aha the consideration should be 130 by 80 so above that anything you should consider the medications or intensive therapy okay medications or intensive therapies right medications or intensive therapies so uh, you know ada and nkf they do not have any considerations here because they are dealing with their own problems own problems means ada is having the guidelines for hypertension for diabetic patients and nkf is dealing with uh, you know the kidney problems hypertension in kidney problems right so uh, this is gnc8 and acc aha now it comes to the esc so esc considered 130 to 139 and less than 80 so we can say 140 by 80 okay we can consider the normal normal like the target for hypertension less than 140 by 80 less than 140 by 80 according to esc if the people are normal adults less than 60 years then definitely we should consider according to jnc 140 by 90 because that is the uh, prehypertension and according to acc that is the prehypertension according to esc also this is the prehypertension so it should be in the prehypertension uh, you know the patient must be in the prehypertension so target the targeted you know goal of the blood pressure must be in the prehypertension categories but if the patient is diabetic but with hypertension diabetic with hypertension then again the patient consider patients uh, you know the considerations according to jnc and acc and according to esc according to esc this should be pre hypertension less than 130 to 80 okay the patient must be in pre hypertension patient should not be in the hypertension categories either stage 1 or stage 2 no no nowhere patient must be in the pre hypertension category or less than uh, you know 140 by jnc and less than 130 by 80 by acc and esc right but now we have ada okay we have ada this american diabetic association so they also say that the targeted therapy must be less than 140 by 80 i mean less targeted goal for the therapy for blood pressure should be less than 140 by 80 less than 140 by 80 so this is totally different from jnc acc a uh, you know acc aha or esc this is American Diabetic Association says if the patient is diabetes, then the targeted goal of blood pressure should be less than 140 by 80. And see if you are looking at less than 130 by 80 for some, that is for the younger patients. Okay, that is for the younger patients, young adults, not the elderly. Okay, 130 by 80 is for the young adults, 140 by 80 is the elderly. Target for elderly patients according to ADA. Okay, according to the kidney failures, uh, you know, according to if the patient is having chronic kidney failure, then the target should be prehypertension according to all. Okay, uh, according to all means, ex uh, you know, except the NKF. So NKF considered less than 140 by 90 and suggested is 130 by 80, but we can consider 140 by 90 according to NKF. Okay, targeted goal for blood pressure in kidney failure problems. Okay, kidney failure patients. If the patient is with cardiovascular disease like ACS or uh, you know uh, any other cardiovascular problems, then the prehypertension is you know suggested, but not less than 120 by 70. Why not less than 120 by 70? Because then the patient can go to hypotension. Okay, patient can go to hypotension and cardiac uh, you know tamponade or cardiac succumb or uh, you know cardiac arrest. So we should always look at this also. We should always look at this also that, you know, patient must be somewhere between 130 to 120 and 80 to 70 mmHg. This is SBP. 
this is dbp these are very important to understand guys these are very important guidelines to understand what should be the target if the patient is with kidney failure what should be the target if patient is with diabetic what should be the target if patient is with cardiovascular problems what should be the target because if we are going less than 120 in diabetic patients see diabetics also have not less than 120 because patient can go to hypotension and hypotension also can lead to what in diabetic patient it can lead to coma okay it can lead to coma in diabetic patients so we have to understand that patient must be between 130 and 120 the target should be less than 130 usually and more than 120 okay so uh, similarly in cardiovascular problems the patient should not go less than 120 by 70 okay patient should not go to hypotension okay now let's understand what exactly and how exactly the hypertension happens pathophysiology of the hypertension so before we go to the pathophysiology of hypertension guys tell me what are the what are the systems what are the body systems or what are the uh, you know we can say the organs included in the hypertension uh, you know genesis okay or increasing the blood pressure tell me the organs included in the hypertension generation or hypertension okay kidneys liver okay kidney liver lungs heart kidney liver lungs and heart okay okay great perfect so kidney liver lungs and adrenal cortex also heart also adrenal cortex also so see i hope your screen is having the complete picture right now so it all starts from the kidney okay it all starts from the kidney right so let me check let me tell you so this is the kidney here how it starts with the kidney your blood pressure goes down there is hypotension okay how it actually starts it starts with the hypotension and less electrolytes or if the electrolyte levels goes down okay if the electrolyte levels goes down so let me tell you one by one all the organs first let's start with the kidney okay so how the kidney stimulates okay how the kidney stimulates so what happens usually is there is hypotension okay there is hypotension and lower levels of sodium and lower levels of potassium sorry potassium okay lower level of sodium and potassium and the condition of hypotension blood pressure is going down okay blood pressure is going down so what usually happens is kidney starts see kidney starts releasing the renin okay kidney starts releasing the renin okay this is the function of kidney and it stimulates with the hypotension and the decreased level of the electrolytes in the body try to understand it completely okay in de decreased level of the electrolytes so when the renin increases in the blood okay in the circulation when the renin levels if the kidney is releasing the renin then definitely renin levels will increase okay once the renin levels are increasing in the blood okay in the circulation immediately liver will stimulates or liver will activate and start secreting the angiotensin okay angiotensin and this renin will convert the angiotensin into angiotensin one okay sorry angiotensinogen angiotensinogen to angiotensin one so the liver starts secreting the angiotensinogen here because the renin levels are increased in the blood and that is happening because of these because of decreased levels of electrolytes okay so it starts with the kidney okay kidney starts secreting the renin and once the renin levels are increased in the circulation immediately liver will start secreting the angiotensinogen and this renin uh, okay so angiotensinogen and what happens is this angiotensinogen is converted into angiotensin 1 okay angiotensin 1 now what happens is now what happens is when there is the angiotensin 1 in the circulation okay so how it happens is from kidney to liver and from liver to lungs okay this angio what happens in lungs now in lungs the angiotensin converting enzyme will be secreted 
okay and in lungs only that will convert the angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 okay angiotensin 1 will convert into angiotensin 2 with the help of angiotensin converting enzyme ace enzyme okay ace this ace okay so with the help of ACE, this angiotensin 2 will angiotensin 1 will be converted into angiotensin 2. Okay. And this angiotensin will what will do? Vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction means it will constrict the inner wall of your vessels. Inner wall of your vessels. Okay. Inner wall of your vessels, wherever the blood flow is there. So what happens is when the you know when the this when the perimeter or circumference of the wall will be constructed so that you know that will increase the blood flow that will increase the peripheral pressure okay that will increase the peripheral pressure and peripheral it will you know go to the peripheral resistance let me tell you how it happens exactly so suppose these are the major arteries normal Vasodilation is there right now because there is hypotension, less electrolytes. But because of that, kidney has activated, liver has activated. Now in lungs, you know, angiotens angiotensinogen has converted into angiotensin 1 and angiotensin, you know, 1 has converted into angiotensin 2. Okay. So what this angiotensin will do is angiotensin will go to the lumen of the vessel and it will constrict. So when it will constrict, the pressure will be there you know in the in the in the vessels okay this pressure will be there in the vessel and how exactly it will uh, you know it will happen it will not exactly start with you know the major vessels it will start with the very very basic vessels like how see from the aorta usually it go to the organs okay and from the organs it goes to the cells or uh, uh, you know it goes to the cells by periphery vessels peripheral vessels okay or peripheral arteries we can say them we say them peripheral arteries peripheral arteries are the smallest arteries okay peripheral arteries are the smallest arteries so in the cells usually what happens is when the peripheral resistance happens the pressure starts from the cell and then it goes to the organ. It goes to the organ and then it goes to the major vessels. And there you can easily check the blood pressure, raised blood pressure. Okay, there you can easily check the, check the blood pressure, the raised blood pressure. So it all starts with the cells and the peripheral vessels. So peripheral vessels only, you know, peripheral vessels increases the major uh, you know blood pressure and then it goes to the major arteries or the bigger arteries and then it shows the impact because we don't uh, you know check the blood pressure in the cells or in the in the minor arteries or in the peripheral arteries peripheral vessels right we check the blood pressure in the major arteries right and there we can see how much it has increased what exactly is the blood pressure is let me tell you so blood pressure or hypertension is nothing but you know peripheral arterial resistance okay peripheral resistance into co cardiac output is equal to your blood pressure okay peripheral arterial resistance and your cardiac output so peripheral resistance is very very important okay when we are considering the blood pressure peripheral uh, resistance is very important and cardiac output is also important cardiac output is nothing but systolic volume and and what Guys, can you tell me what is that systolic volume and systolic volume and what is called systolic volume and <clears throat> yes, tell me. What is cardiac output? A stroke volume and sorry, a stroke volume, yes, stroke volume and a stroke volume and hr heart rate okay so systolic or sorry uh, stroke volume and heart rate is co the cardiac output and cardiac output in cardiac output multiplies with par peripheral arterial resistance is your blood pressure 
Okay, that is the usual formula of blood pressure. So it all starts with the peripheral vessels. Okay, it starts with the peripheral vessels, right? And that's how it leads to the vasoconstriction. So see, we have seen the involvement of kidney, liver, and lungs now. We have seen the involvement of these. But other than these, there are multiple things. Okay, there are uh, there are other multiple things also. Like if the patient is taking mineralocorticoids and uh, you know if the BNP is increased due to the mineralocorticoids or other peptides, uh, you know other uh, reasons. If your you know BNPs have increased, okay, so it will definitely increase the plasma and extra vellular volume okay and certain other things like adrenal cortex will uh you know start uh you know uh, will be activated and it will release the aldosterone and aldosterone will increase the sodium retention in your kidney okay it will start sodium retention in your kidney and that will also lead to the increased plasma and extravellular volume okay it will also increase the volume okay and if there is high plasma level and volume and high sodium level it will definitely increase the cardiac output okay it will increase the cardiac output and increasing cardiac output means increasing the blood pressure hypertension Okay, so other genetic factors are there, uh, environmental factors are there, which were which are directly or indirectly increasing the cardiac output. And heart rate contractility is also there in heart failure patients and in arrhythmia patients. So heart heart rate contractility also can lead to increased cardiac output and directly lead to the blood pressure, increased blood pressure, hypertension, right? And in the you know in the heart only there are multiple other things like it can happen due to ACS, it can happen due to arrhythmias, and if it is valvular heart disease valvular heart, heart disease or uh, maybe the heart failure okay maybe the heart failure or valvular heart disease it can lead to the defective smooth muscles and defective smooth muscles also can increase the vascular wall thickness what is vascular wall thickness? due to cardiomyopathies okay due to cardiomyopathies also it can increase the vascular wall thickness and vascular wall thickness can again increase the tpr mm. peripheral resistance Okay, and total peripheral resistance means your blood pressure is increasing because cardiac output is high and either, you know, uh, TPR is high or the cardiac output is high, definitely it will multiply to the blood pressure. It will increase the blood pressure levels in your body, right? And then other than that, there are drugs as we have discussed, you know, thromboxane is there, catecholamine is there, leukotrienes are there, endothelin, uh, alpha adrenergic. So these are the drugs and other receptors and, uh, you know, other mechanisms which can increase the total peripheral resistance. Okay, total peripheral resistance TPR and it can also lead to, I mean, it will lead to hypertension directly. And so there are multiple things which can which can directly or indirectly, you know, raise your blood pressure. But the major, you know, system which is involved is RAAS. Okay. Major system is RAAS. Okay. So let me show you what is RAAS. This much, this much is RAAS. Okay. This much is your RAS. Okay. This much is your RAS system. What is RAS system? Renin angio renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Okay. Renin angiotensin aldosterone. Understand? Renin angiotensin aldosterone. This is the RAS system. So this is the major contribution, major contributor or major contributory factor to the blood pressure high blood pressure to the hypertension. RAS system is the major mechanism of hypertension, major pathophysiology of hypertension. And I'll come back again to the primary and secondary. So there are 90% of primary hypertension and 10% of secondary hypertension. Okay, there are 90% of primary hypertension and 10% of Secondary hypertension. We don't know what's the reason of, you know, primary hypertension directly. It could be genetic also. It could be obesity also. It could be idiopathic also. It could be, you know, others also, which are related to your body, family history maybe, right? I mean, genetics. But there is no obvious reason detected for the primary or idiopathic hypertension. Understand, guys? Okay. So, uh, we have studied the guidelines and see, 
so now i'll come to the rest system okay ras system and let's understand it one by one okay step by step this is the entire pathophysiology and entire mechanism all other systems body systems involved in the hypertension or raising the blood pressure but this is the only rest system it starts and it is in the step wise process so first as i told you blood volume will, will decrease blood pressure will decrease okay and electrolytes also will decrease okay it starts with this it starts with this decreasing the electrolytes blood pressure and blood volume okay now what happens is because of that there is sodium deficiency okay and it will you know like decreasing the blood volume decreasing the blood pressure so what exactly happens is it will go to the i mean uh, decreasing the blood pressure influence or activate the kidney you know juxtaglomerular uh, cells of the kidneys so you uh, know juxtaglomerular cells of kidney will activate and it will release the renin see it will release the renin so what renin will do when the renin levels are levels are increased in your circulation what happens is liver will release the angiotensinogen okay and this red renin will convert angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 as i told in the previous picture also but the same thing only ras system this is the ras system okay renin angiotensin aldosterone system okay so it will increase the angiotensin uh, angiotensin 1 because renin is converting angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 right liver and this is happening in the lungs this is happening in the lungs okay and now this angiotensin will convert into angiotensin 2 in lungs only with the help of ace angiotensin converting enzyme okay angiotensin converting this process this angiotensin 2 angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 100 percent process is happening in the lungs okay this uh, i mean angiotensinogen to angiotensin somehow it is happening in the liver and circulation system renin is released completely by the kidney so all three systems are involved first kidney then liver then your lungs where angiotensin 1 is converting into angiotensin 2 when the angiotensin 2 is there released or uh, you know now it is activated what it will do first of all it will increase the aldosterone secretion from the uh, you know adrenal cortex okay it will activate the adrenal cortex and it will increase the aldosterone system i mean it will uh, you know increase the aldosterone in the body so adrenal cortex will release the aldosterone so now aldosterone is, i mean aldosterone is increased aldosterone levels are increased in the body what they will do is see in kidneys again now sodium and water absorption will increase okay we call it sodium and water reabsorption or retention okay reabsorption or retention okay so when the sodium and water retention will be there so what it will do it will increase the flood volume fluid volume in the body fluid volume or you know blood volume in the body fluid volume okay so fluid volume means cardiac output and your total volume will increase and it will lead to the increased blood pressure and increased blood volumes understand guys so this is how it works and this also leads to the vasoconstriction of arterioles arterioles means the smallest arteries and this will lead to your total peripheral resistance increment understand this is a very simple process to understand very simple stepwise process to understand so major contribution to the raised blood pressure or hypertension we say is your rest system so it is easy to understand okay I hope you understood the rest system and mechanism of action. Yes, guys, please tell me if you understood or you want me to repeat something or any confusion till now. Please tell me, guys. Did you get it? Okay. Great. Okay. So now the pathophysiology is completed. What else? Okay. If I talk about hypertension, what are the next levels of hypertension suppose somebody is getting more than 180 and 100, 100 mmhg what does it mean what does it mean yes guys 
if somebody is getting 100 mm hg diastolic and 180 systolic blood pressure what it can do and how it can you know impact the body what are this what are these conditions called okay so you are talking about now hypertension emergency and urgency so tell me the difference between hypertension emergency and urgency yes guys tell me the difference between hypertension emergency and urgency hypertension crisis is I, this entire thing is called hypertension crisis okay this entire thing is called hypertension crisis that could be either hypertension emergency or hypertension urgency oh no organ dysfunction in emergency manish come on so there is only one difference between urgency and emergency blood pressure will be acutely high in both the conditions okay blood pressure will be acutely high in both the conditions very high but the difference between emergency and urgency okay the difference between emergency and urgency is in emergency there there will be the organ damage organ damage and in urgency no organ damage okay no organ damage right that is the only difference between urgency and emergency so in urgency there will be no organ damage and emergency there will be organ damage and stage organ damage right so what is the exact you know organ damage what are the organs uh, you know which are damaged in the urgent uh, with the in the emergency can someone tell me no problem it's fine if you have written by mistake that's okay so what are the organs damaged in the kidney brain absolutely yes absolutely so uh, oh, this is not the right way. Okay. So, kidney, brain, liver, eye, muscles. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. No problem. So, these are the major organs. Major organ is like first number one is heart. Okay. Two is kidney. Third is brain. Okay, so heart means not only the heart, but heart and carotid system. Okay, carotid system. Brain, kidney, liver also could be there. Okay, and then eye could be there. Okay, so what exactly happens in, what exactly happens? Like if I'm talking about heart, then what happens? If I'm talking about what are the heart changes in the heart? Yes, please tell me guys. What are the changes in the heart? What can happen in the heart? What can happen in the heart? Tell me. In hypertension emergency, what can happen in the heart? What can happen in the heart, guys? Tell me. Tachycardia, MI, arrhythmia, infarcts. Okay. So, first thing which can happen is ACS. Okay. ACS. Then, what? APE, pulmonary edema. Okay, it can lead to pulmonary edema. ACS means heart attack only. A, a pulmonary edema, it can lead to arrhythmias minorly, but it can lead to arrhythmias also. It can lead to heart failure. Okay, ACS and AP are the major things. If I'm talking about brain, what can happen? In brain, guys, what can happen in brain? Sorry. A stroke. A stroke can happen. Hemorrhagic stroke. Or, or what? Hemorrhagic stroke can happen. Then what else can happen? Ischemic stroke can happen. ITA can happen. Ischemic trans, what is that? Ischemic transient attack. ITA can happen. Ischemic stroke can happen. Hemorrhagic stroke can happen. And neuro disorders, other neuro dysfunction can happen. You know, neurological disappearance, uh, you know, dysfunctions can, can happen. Okay. In I, what can happen? No blindness, no glaucoma, 
we call it acute retinal infarct okay retinopathy retinal hemorrhage can happen okay and then if we call about kidney then definitely acute renal failure can happen okay acute liver failure can happen liver cirrhosis is a chronic condition liver cirrhosis is not that is what you have to differentiate guys liver cirrhosis is a chronic condition okay liver cirrhosis is not the acute condition acute liver failure can happen acute kidney failure can happen not chronic kidney failure because ckf or ckd is the chronic condition if i'm talking about hypertensive emergency that means we have to talk about acute problems right there is a difference huge difference between acute and chronic conditions right so these can happen in the hypertensive emergencies right and if it is hypertensive urgency then there will be nothing okay no end organ damage so how we do detect how do we detect the possible hypertensive emergency so first of all your blood pressure will be raised like more than 180 110 okay more than 180 110 and okay if the patient is hypertensive or not doesn't matter okay and then you check if there are the mediated organ damage we call it h m o a d okay acute hypertension mediated organ damage okay so in, in case of hypertensive emergency so what it could be we can check uh, if it is acs we can check by troponin t which can check by anti pro bnp we can check by ecg we can check by echo we can check by uh, you know uh, cag we can check by these means if there is anything which is related to heart which is related to heart right and if it is related to kidney then definitely you know your electrolytes serum creatinine that can be done immediately okay if it is related to ischemic stroke then again we can check uh, you know the carotid mri or cag can be done or it can be checked in uh, you know ecg also right it can be done in ecg exactly it will not tell the stroke but we can check with the sign and symptoms sign and symptoms to definitely everywhere i mean the primary diagnosis can be based on the sign and symptoms and then you know the biomarkers and then the radiology right and if it is uh, you know like preeclampsia or maybe pre uh, you know eclampsia in the pregnant women that can be you know checked with the help of raised blood pressure and with the you know ultrasound or maybe the biomarkers okay so that can be checked okay if it is there then uh, okay so these are they have written here so chest x-ray can be done troponin t ckmb or uh, you know echocardiography angiography can be done to check the ac ACS or acp okay acp is nothing but you know your pulmonary edema okay and then this uh you know kidney problems and ischemic attack uh like all the strokes all type of strokes or hypertensive encephalopathy can happen or uh, in the pregnant women uh preeclampsia or eclampsia can happen right so if it is confirmed hypertensive emergency, then go for the then we go for the treatment. Treatment will take in the next classes definitely. So, okay. Now, what are the risk factors for the hypertension, guys? Tell me. What are the risk factors for hypertension? Obesity, age, okay. See, if I divide. If I divide these things into modifiable and non-modifiable, tell me what are modifiable, what are non-modifiable? What are modifiable and what are non-modifiable risk factors? Yes. Non-modifiable are age, gender, race, ethnicity. Okay, age, gender, race, ethnicity. Okay, and genetic. And what else? And modifiable smoking, alcohol consumption. What else? Lifestyle, stress, 
I mean lifestyle only, food and stress. Then what else? What else is modifiable? Okay, what else? Diabetes and all. Okay, weight loss, obesity. So here are the things. So non-modifiable is definitely genetic, gender, ethnicity, and other things which are modifiable is obesity, salt intake, potassium intake, saturated fats, alcohol, diet, smoking, stress, physical activity, socioeconomic status. These could be the modifiable risk factors of hypertension. So major risk factors are non-modifiable and modifiable. Age, gender, genetic and ethnicity are non-modifiable. Definitely we cannot modify these things. And modifiable, obesity, salt intake, potassium intake, saturated fats, alcohol and all. Right? Now, let's talk about how to diagnose the blood pressure. How to check the blood pressure. Okay. How to check the blood pressure. Yes, guys. How to check the blood pressure? If I ask you, what are the pre-checkup preparations? Pre-checkup and uh, <clears throat> peri-checkup. There are two things. Okay, so tell me what are the pre-checkup preparations for hypertension or blood pressure check? Tell me. History collection, biochemistry, spectrometer. See, that diagnosis, I'll come back. I'll come back to that. Okay, that I'll come back. Till now, we are talking about this. I'm taking, I'm, I'm asking about how to check blood pressure. Okay, how to check blood pressure. So, there are some pre-checkup preparations. There are some peri-checkup preparations. So, what is pre-checkup preparations, guys? Tell me. Ambulatory BP monitoring, family history, spigma manometer. No. If someone is coming to you for the blood pressure checkup, what are the pre-checkup conditions or what are the pre-checkup preparations you will take? See, I'm not asking about sign and symptoms that we have talked about, that we have, I mean, talked about the things. I'm talking about someone is coming to blood pressure checkup, blood pressure checkup, not the hypertension treatment. So the first thing is, if the person is coming, then he or she must take at least five minutes rest. No caffeine or codeine at least for 30 minutes, last 30 minutes. No exercise or gym for last 30 minutes. Okay. Right. And then what else? What else, guys? Tell me. What else? No smoking or alcohol. No smoking or alcohol. Yes. No smoking or alcohol. Somebody's mic is on. Please put off your mics. No smoking or alcohol consumption. The day. Okay. And what else? Okay, these are the pre-checkup conditions and quiet place. Quiet place. Okay, validated spectrometer. Okay, validated spectrometer. Right, then what else in pre-check, peri-checkup? What are the peri-checkup conditions, guys? Tell me. Anyone? Sitting position. What else? Calf near to heart. Okay. And what else? Anyone can tell me? See. So this is the proper way of blood pressure checking. This is the proper way of blood pressure checking. Quiet room. Comfortable temperature. No smoking coffee or exercise for last 30 minutes. Empty bladder, relax for three to five minutes. Take at least three measurements and take the average of any two, the last two. Okay. And the patient must not talk during or in between the measurements. Calf to fit the arm size. And it should be 
in the level of heart okay it should be in the level of heart remember that okay arm bare arm should be in the resting position arm should be in the resting position and there must be there must be you know something to something to rest the arm upon okay right guys these are the important things back supported means sitting position back supported validated manometer whether it is electronic or anything okay normal auscultatory anything it could be okay feet must be flat on the floor so this is the ideal this is the ideal blood pressure check okay this is the ideal blood pressure check right this is the ideal blood pressure check if you are checking the blood pressure for the patient right so that's how we should focus on that's how we should take care of the blood pressure otherwise you know why it is important why these things are important pre checkup and post uh, sorry pre checkup and peri checkup uh, you know precautions we can say or we can say the you know cautions or we can say the preparations you know why these are important you will be understanding these today okay you will be understanding these today look at this okay look at this look at this chart look at this table guys look at this table look at this table if there is the acute meal okay ingestion so your blood pressure can go down minus 6 sbp and minus 5 to minus 2 in dbp if you are checking immediate after the meal okay if you are checking immediate after the caffeine your blood pressure can be increased from 3 to 14 in sbp and through 2 to 13 in dbp similarly with the nicotine use if you are directly coming from the nicotine use smoking then your blood pressure can raise up to 25 and S and DVP by 18. Okay, that's why these are important. If you are, you know, your bladder is not empty, it can be varied. Your SBP can be varied from 4 to 33 and DVP can be varied from 3 to 19 mmHg. Okay, if you have the white coat effect, then your SBP could raise up to 26 and DVP can raise up to 21. That's why these things must be taken care. Okay, these things must be taken care. And for exercise also, if you are thinking the exercise is not written, exercise also, if you are coming from the exercise, that can also lead somewhere from plus 3 to, you know, plus 3 to plus 20 in your SBP. Okay, that's very important if the patient is coming. You should take care of all the precautions, all the conditions before and uh, you know, during the blood pressure check. It is very important, right? Otherwise, you know, you will get a lot of errors in the blood pressure. So that can lead to either therapy or something. Understand, guys? So this is very important. So now if the patient is coming up with the comorbidities, there are, there are multiple comorbidities. So multiple comorbidities could be checked, right? If the patient is coming with ACS, so definitely either antiprovin P, CKMB, right? CKMB or, uh, you know, uh, drop T, ECG and ECO are the important tools to do. Okay. And other things, HB is important to do. And, you know, these are the proper monitoring and diagnosis if the patient is coming with the hypertension to you, coming, coming with the raised blood pressure. Then creatinine, sodium levels, potassium levels, right? These can be, you know, done must. You can go for hypothyroidism check or hyperthyroidism check also by the TSH levels. Okay. You must check the hyperlipidemia also by your TG or uh, your LDL, your, uh, you know, HDL or total cholesterol. Okay. These things must be checked if someone is in the hypertension. If somebody is coming to you with the blood pressure, then you must check for all the organs uh, all the, if the all organs are damaged, liver function, AST, okay, A AST or uh, ALP or, uh, you know, these things must be checked, okay, if the, if someone is coming to you, AST, ALT uh, must be checked, okay, uh, so your important things to check, important things to diagnose at the time of hypertension diagnosis along with the sign and symptoms, it is important to check the heart, it is important to check the liver. It is important to check the kidney. It is important to check the, uh, you know, other parameters like thyroid. Okay, because these can be contributing factors also, or these could be affected by the raised blood pressure also. Okay, these are the important things to check. Right, guys. Uh, okay, so complications and all we can, uh, you know, uh, study later in the next classes. 
So what are the major complications exactly if you can tell me for the diabetes uh, for the hypertension guys just name down comorbidities of the not comorbidities sorry complications complications so what is the difference between complication and the comorbidity guys please tell me first comorbidity and complications what are the things what is the difference between complication and comorbidity so okay if i talk about acs it is comorbidity or complication tell me acs is comorbidity or complications complication come on acs could be comorbidity also acs could be co uh, complication also diabetes could be complication also diabetes could be comorbidity also stroke could be complication also co so the thing is comorbidity means which is already existing okay which is already present complication means which is induced by this condition okay like hypertension complications means which are induced by the hypertension okay so acs could be comorbidity also if it is existed and lead to hypertension so like vice versa things are there hypertension can lead to acs also and acs also can lead to hypertension diabetes can lead to hypertension or hypertension can lead to diabetes so the conditions which are already existing okay which are already existing are called as comorbidities and if the new conditions coming from uh, coming because of the existing condition that is called as complication right if suppose acs is already present so acs is comorbidity <clears throat> if acs is happening because of or after the hypertension that means it is complication of the hypertension okay so that can be happening either ways okay guys you have to understand that so what are the complications of uh, you know hypertension complications of hypertension could be acs stroke or acute kidney failure or uh, you know ckf retinopathy could be there or uh, what else could be there liver dysfunction could be there and what else what else guys hypertension can lead to what else yes pad nephropathy okay yes pulmonary edema right so these all could be happening due to hypertension right so aneurysm can happen definitely aneurysm can happen okay aneurysm can happen yes definitely coarctation of aorta can happen definitely then what else heart failure can happen absolutely heart failure can happen yes what else okay so till now any doubt guys any questions for me i think we have covered the uh, basics pathophysiology and all acha along with that one more thing what we you know uh, forgot to discuss today very important thing what are the signs and symptoms of symptoms of hypertension yes guys signs and symptoms of hypertension please tell me what are the signs and symptoms of hypertension yes sob headache okay giddiness dizziness okay shortness of breath dizziness giddiness okay giddiness and headache and nausea blur vision chest pain syncope yes absolutely syncope blur vision nausea is a minor thing but it can happen nausea actually we cannot keep the nausea here fatigue okay so we'll just delete the nausea okay what else fainting sweating 
okay sweating can happen okay sweating can happen fainting in emergency cases can happen okay okay sir will there be a delayed wound healing in hypertension no because of hypertension there will be no delayed wound healing there will be you know either on time or maybe early epitaxis yes epitaxis could be epitaxis could be can someone tell me what is epitaxis guys what is epitaxis nose bleeding okay what is hemoptysis what is hemoptysis not blood vomitings it is like blood in cough or blood through the mouth okay yes okay so any other confusions guys what is the white coat hypertension what is the white coat hypertension please tell me white coat hypertension once let's discuss white coat hypertension also what is white coat hypertension yes fear of doctor hypertension in the clinical environment bp raise seeing a doc yes okay so white coat hypertension is when someone is going to the doctor or someone is going to the clinical uh, site or the hospital then they are stressed and immediately their bp goes high okay so what is the bar of white coat hypertension guys what is the cutoff of hypertension in white coat yes please tell me yes any idea so white coat hypertension could raise up to 30 mmhg okay 30 mmhg sbp and 20 mmhg dbp so suppose if the patient is normal with 120 by 80 if the patient is having white coat hypertension then the bp can go up to 130 150 by 100 and doctor will see and tell oh my god you have the very high blood pressure and you should take medicines immediately so if the med if the patient is taking medicines in such conditions what can happen yes guys what can happen you guys missed a very important thing you know you guys missed a very important thing in between one of the major complication of hypertension one of the major complication of hypertension that is hypotension hypotension you missed the hypotension okay hypotension is one of the major and first complication of hypertension okay so the patient can go into hypotension right so to relieve that questions for you guys if the patient is having white coat hypertension what he should do and how he should do that yes please tell me now one or two more terms has come here what is ambulatory bp monitoring okay and what is home bp monitoring yes tell me guys no word okay salt intake what is ambulatory bp monitoring tell me and what is 24 hours of bp measurement okay 24 hours of BP measurement is ambulatory BP. Why do we do that MP, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, ABM? Why do we do that ambulatory blood pressure monitoring? Why do we need ambulatory blood pressure monitoring? Yes, guys, please tell me why do we need ambulatory blood pressure monitoring? 
एम्बुलेटरी ब्लड प्रेशर मॉनिटरिंग इज द प्रॉपर डायग्नोसिस ऑफ व्हाइट कोट हाइपर टेंशन ओके और मे बी ड्यू टू द किडनी प्रॉब्लम ओके यूजली इन व्हाइट कोट हाइपर टेंशन वी गो फॉर एम्बुलेटरी ब्लड प्रेशर चेक सो वी कैन सी इफ द पेशेंट इज इंक्रीजिंग और द ब्लड प्रेशर ऑफ द पेशेंट इज इंक्रीज ओनली इन द क्लिनिक और आउटसाइड सो इन सच केसेज वी गो फॉर एम्बुलेटरी ब्लड प्रेशर मॉनिटरिंग एंड वी गो फॉर आई दर होम ब्लड प्रेशर मॉनिटरिंग दैट कैन बी डन एट द प्लेस ऑफ द पेशेंट ओके अंडरस्टैंड टू चेक द पैटर्न ऑफ ब्लड प्रेशर डेफिनेटली यस मैम टू टू चेक द ब्लड प्रेशर ऑफ आई मीन टू चेक द पैटर्न ऑफ द ब्लड प्रेशर राइट ओके so any doubt guys any questions for me here drugs and all we'll discuss tomorrow any questions what is mast hypertension yes anyone who can tell me what is mast hypertension mast hypertension yes mast hypertension what is masked hypertension guys tell me yes what is masked hypertension someone can tell me masked hypertension okay not satisfied results okay so this is the question for you there are three four answers i got from you guys uh, you know in personal messages and uh, here someone is telling subclinical hypertension okay and someone is telling this is just opposite sort of is telling it's just opposite to white coat hypertension okay or someone is telling it is nocturnal blood pressure okay so this is the question for you guys exactly you have to tell me in the group what is mast hypertension okay okay so guys thank you for today if no more questions and we'll see you tomorrow okay we'll see you tomorrow guys thank you okay sir explain about how do we determine the blood pressure stages in next class by taking the mean of systematic okay mean of sbp how do we do that i want to know no see mean of the bp is nothing i'll tell today only i'll tell today only what is the mean of bp see usually when someone comes to we don't practice it in india but it usually happens like if somebody some patient is coming to your clinic okay patient is coming to your clinic then after the pre precautions pre precautions means after 5 minutes of wait and all the conditions like he should not be uh you know he should not been done the exercise or you know running or anything or he should not have taken the caffeine uh, you know sorry caffeine not caffeine caffeine or codeine okay so i mixed both caffeine or codeine or maybe some you know uh, other drugs or meal within 30 minutes so what happens is in such cases what we do is within 1 minute okay when we are checking the blood pressure within 1 minute within 1 uh, minute we take three readings so if suppose first reading is saying 120 by 80 second reading is saying 124 by 82 third reading is saying 130 by 86 okay so what we do is we take last two readings and we take the mean 124 136 is what is the meaning of that what is the mean of that 127 mmhg sbp okay and 84 mhg dbp okay so this is the blood pressure this is the mean blood pressure and based on that whatever category is so this is the pre hypertension category according to jnc or and this is the elevated blood pressure according to acc aha okay so this is how we check the blood pressure okay this is how we check the blood pressure we take always the last two readings we check three readings but we take last two readings within 1 minutes all three readings should be taken within 1 minute and last two readings and mean of these two readings we take 
okay and according to that whatever is the classification of whichever you are taking either jnc or acc ha or, or whatever esc according to that you can classify your hypertension you can classify the patient into that category if it is in the elevated blood pressure stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 okay that's how we do and we take the mean blood pressure okay got it amira devika is asking sir do we give medicines for white coat hypertension we check we check you you know we go for ambulatory blood pressure monitoring or home based uh, you know monitoring not only one day but continuously three readings again okay continuously three readings three days okay at least three days at home we check the blood pressure we take the mean and if the blood pressure is really high then we start the medications for white coat hypertension also right so high white coat hypertension does not mean that patient will be in the normal condition white coat means the blood pressure is blood pressure is raising when the patient is coming to the hospital so blood pressure could be raised even in the normal condition so if, if it is raised in the normal condition if the patient is hypertensive only and uh, you know then we definitely have to start the medicine so you know it will be increased more if the patient is coming to the hospital okay in such cases right guys got it okay thank you thank you thank you thank you guys thank you guys sustained hypertension sustained hypertension is nothing but when the hypertension is not being controlled by the medicines also okay okay so guys take care we'll see you tomorrow again bye bye take care guys bye tomorrow we'll talk about the medicines and all orthostatic hypertension okay who will tell about orthostatic hypertension guys orthostatic hypertension very very uh, you know very nice topic tell me orthostatic hypertension or we call it postural hypertension also if you forgot the name guys postural hypertension okay what is orthostatic or postural hypertension bp is blood pressure is different in different postures varies with the different postures like when the patient is standing the blood pressure will be something else when the patient is lying the blood pressure will be something else or when the patient is sitting the blood pressure will be something else okay so you have to tell me the blood pressure ranges in the postural hypertension also okay yes definitely okay guys any other questions a uh, lot of hypertension we came to know today right postural hypertension accelerated hypertension sustained hypertension a lot of other hypertensions right a lot of hypertensions we came to know today what is accelerated hypertension guys tell me sustained hypertension means we have to accelerate the medicines also we have to uh, you know give the if the patient is again sustained with the blood pressure with monotherapy we go for dual therapy we go for triple therapy okay so that's the treatment means we usually increase the dose or add the therapy you know add the other drugs monotherapy to double therapy dual therapy dual therapy to triple therapy no it's not necessary for for the first time you can check the uh, you know blood pressure in different positions but if it is okay if there is no difference in different positions then no need to go for it different means in all the patients okay in all the patients there is a difference with the postural all the patients okay but that if it is raise if going more than 5 mmhg if it is going more than 5 mmhg then only it is called as postural hypertension okay then only it is called as postural hypertension if you are thinking like here 120 here 124 here 122 this is not postural hypertension postural hypertension means if it is at least going more than 5 okay mmhg if it is more than 5 mmhg then it can understand or it can consider as the postural hypertension okay 5 is i think less i think it is more than 10 i am not sure i'll check out 
but definitely it is less than it is it should not be less than 5 okay if it is less than 5 the difference is less than 5 then you cannot say it postural hypertension because it's there this way this uh, uh, you know uh, this is how it varies with the postures in all the patients all the human beings okay I hope you understand, guys. Okay. Sure, guys, then. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Good night, guys. Bye. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.